Hello, Random Help here, and today we're going to be talking about specialization for GCC economics and the board we're using is OCR. However, if you're still interested in checking out about specialization or you need uh, some guidance on specialization specifically, then please do still watch this video. Our learning objective for today is to know what specialization is, to explain how and why firms specialize, and to explain and evaluate the costs and benefits of individuals and firms specializing. Here are a few de definitions you'll need to jot down. Firm specialization is when a firm produces a specific range of products. Individual specialization, so um, individual workers, there is when a person does something they're specifically skilled at and becomes better at it. So there's a, a higher output in that sense. So they can make a higher output. Apologies. And here are an example for um, specialization. David and Billy can make and sell toys. David makes 50 toys in 10 hours and takes 20 hours to sell it. That means David is great at making toys, but he's not great at selling it. Billy, on the other hand, takes 20 hours to make 50 toys, but 10 hours to sell them. That means he's great at selling them, but it's harder for him to make them. Without specialization, they each make and sell 50 toys in 30 hours or 100 toys in 30 hours altogether. If they specialize, then total output will increase because in 30 hours, David can make 150 toys. Billy can sell 150 toys in 30 hours. It means in the same time, they'll be able to make 150 toys, which means their output has increased by 50%. Example 2. 100 tons in so field A, 100 tons can be is grown for wheat. Uh, when you grow wheat, it make, you can produce 100 tons it. But for thing, for oat, you can only make, produce 20 tons due to the conditions, apparently. And here, 20 tons of wheat can be made, but only, and but 100 tons of oat. Now, if you use the whole area, then you can make 200 tons of wheat and 200 tons of oat. So that you doubled um output, which is good for the firm because then you can sell it for uh, more revenue. Workers. Specialized workers tend to get a higher pay. Workers specific skills will be improved which can, they can use to become more employable. They are more motivated for job satisfaction. That's actually good for the firm as well because if they're more satisfied with the job they will want to make a higher output. What, what's so good for the firm? Well, workers become quicker at producing goods so they're more productive. Because of increased productivity, uh, production becomes cheaper per good. There's a lower average cost. Remember pro what productivity means? Output per worker per time period. Production levels are also increased. And because we are at the same cost, when we get to costs, I'll explain this uh, in more depth. But when you do have the same cost, but you're making way more products, then you're going to have a lower average cost. And if you have a lower average cost, then you can sell it for more profit. But there are a few disadvantages. Boredom for the workers as they do the same job every day. So if you still do the same job again and again and again, you're gonna get bored. Like for anything, if you sometimes do, if you play a game, you do, you play that game again and again and again, you're gonna get bored over one day. Worker skills may suffer, uh, may suffer as they are only doing one job. So even though they might be really skilled at it, and other work, other employers might say, "Oh my gosh, he's really good at these skills," they might not get you in because you don't. You might not have a wide range of skills. Workers may eventually be replaced by machinery, which increases unemployment. Yes, you can get workers because of specialization. Uh, the firm might say, "Oh, the labor cost is too high. We might just." You use a different type of capital, which is a machine, so they might get replaced. What about for the firm? They, there's a greater cost of training workers because they're trying to get them specialized. It's harder to, um, it costs more to train them, and also because they're training the workers for a specific skill. If a worker is sick in one of the aisles, then they will need a specific worker for, for that aisle. Or what will happen is they will not be able to uh, run that aisle as as productively as possible. Quality also may suffer if the workers become bored by the lack of variety of their jobs. So because of their boredom, they then their quality may suffer, which is bad for the firm because they're going to lose money as 
as consumers would want high quality products from them and workers are going to be more expensive to get due to the their specialization here's an ex a simple exam exam question you you can try out in the table below place a tick against the two taste statements which are advantages of specialization to a firm well is a decrease in opportunity cost no that's not a thing to do with uh, specialization is, does it increase in productivity yes it does increase in productivity and our question is for the advantages so we will take this here we go so we just take that and then does it have a lower average cost yes we do have a lower average cost because at the same cost and a high pro, pro, uh, at a high productivity, you're going to have a lower average cost. So you'll say tick to that. Do workers become bored? They do become bored, but remember they told you about the advantages, not the disadvantages. So please be aware of that in the exam. All right. So that's all for today. Um, our next topic will be about money and the function of money. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you, Random Help, over and out. And I hope you subscribe, like this video if you need any help. Please do comment on the comment section below. Thank you.